Hi, this is Jeff James coming to you again with Navigating Teen Life. Now one of the things we've seen more in the news lately are, are active shooter events and we've seen them in schools, theaters, malls, and even outdoor venues. And it can be pretty scary. So over the course of the next few videos, we're going to talk about the best practices to survive an active shooter event. Now I know there's a lot of information out there about this stuff and in, in your school you've probably learned the, the ALICE model, which stands for Alert, Lockdown, Inform, Confront, and Evacuate. That's a lot to think about, especially in those moments of high stress. So there's only three words I want you to worry about when you're, if you're ever caught in one of these situations, and that is run, hide, fight. We're gonna address each of those in its own separate video, but for now I just wanted to introduce this, tell you that we're gonna be talking about it, and look for my next video where we start talking about what to do if you're, if you're somewhere where there is an active shooter and the best way to get away from it in the run part of run, hide, fight. We'll see you then. Hi, this is Jeff James coming to you again for Navigating Teen Life. So in my introductory video, I told you that if you're ever involved in an active shooter scenario, all I want you to worry about is three words, run, hide, fight. Today we're going to talk about the run part of it. Now, all these best practices that we're going to talk about are going to be the same, whether you're at a house of worship, whether you're at a restaurant, a theater, or at your school. So all the tips I'm going to give you today are going to work whether you're here, 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 or here, these practices are all going to be the same if you're in an active shooter scenario. That you don't need to leave the way you came in. So if you came in through these doors, you don't need to leave through these doors if it's an emergency situation. You can get down these steps and get out another entrance. If someone's shooting at the front of that store and you're near the back, get out the back and just get out of here. We got to talk about the doors. So if you're running from an active shooter, and you come to a door, how are you going to know whether or not you need to pull that door or push that door? Some doors are very obvious. If they have a push bar, you know you need to push that to open it. But if this door just had a handle or a knob, the easy way to tell you that if you needed to push it or pull it to open it is like this. If you can see the hinges on a door, it means you need to pull it. So on this door, we can't see the hinges. We know we need to push this door to open it. Conversely, if we went to the other side of the door, we can see that obviously the hinges show, so now we know that when we're on this side of the door, we need to pull it to open. And that's important because if you're running toward this door in an emergency situation, you don't want to try to push it open and then you get stuck against it and your friends get stuck against you and now you're all jammed up against the door. So if you can have that moment of clarity, look for the hinges if you can see them. No, you got to slow down a little bit, grab the handle and pull it to get out. Hi, this is Jeff James again coming to you for Navigating Teen Life. Now we talked about surviving an active shooter event and I told you that the three things I want you to remember are going to be run, hide, fight. In our last episode we talked about what to do if you want to run and you need to just get away from the gunman, get out of the building. But what if that's not a viable option for you? What if your classroom or your office is at the end of a dead end hallway? At that point your best option is going to be to hide. What you're going to want to try to do is get behind a locked door if you can. Something like this is ideal. You get behind this nice, heavy, solid wood door, lock it. There's no windows for the gunman to see in, and you're going to be safe in there. From all the accounts we've seen, unless the gunman is targeting you specifically, they're not going to take the time to try to breach a locked door because they know as soon as they pull a trigger the first time, somebody's calling 911 and good guys are on the way. So they know that their timeline is really short. So they're not going to try to get through this door unless you're the person they're looking for. Your other option might be something like this. This door has a window but you can see that it's covered. Again, get in there, shut the lights off. You want the appearance that the room is empty. So cover that window, you don't have to worry about the gunman seeing you. If neither of those are viable options for you and the window, there is a window in the, in the room, what you wanna do is turn the lights off and try to figure out a way to get away from the shooter's line of sight. So in this situation, you would wanna get back into this far corner of the room where the shooter, even if he tried as hard as he could, couldn't get eyes on you to see that you're in there. Again, you want to give the appearance that the room is empty. Well, what if we're outside somewhere like this? This could be the parking lot to your school or a playground or a ball field. I know your tendency is going to be to want to get to your car and get away from the danger, but what if the shooter's out there by where you parked? What's going to be a better option for you here is to get into this wood line, find a place to hide, um, get, get into the high grass or behind some of those trees, big, thick, heavy trees like oak trees and, um, and elm trees, they'll soak up bullets like a sponge. So in this situation, getting away from where the shooter is and into these woods is gonna be a better option for you than trying to get back to your car where the danger is. 
Let's talk about a scenario where maybe you're at a mall or a shopping center and there's a gunman who's just in this open space shooting. You don't want to go certainly toward the gunman if your car's over there, but you can still utilize other cars in the parking lot as cover if you can't get farther away. The engine block of a car is going to stop any round that can be shot from a handheld weapon, but you got to make sure you're in the right position. If the gunman is over there, you're going to want to get behind this tire, the front tires, so now you have both tires and the engine block as cover. You need to avoid getting behind the back tires because you don't have the engine block there. If the gunman is on this side, you're going to want to move around to the opposite side. Now this might require you to keep moving if the gunman is moving, and maybe you even move from car to car, but your best position is going to be in front of the tires, and I'm sorry, by the front tires, so on the opposite side of the gunman, so you have the tires and the engine block to protect you. Hi, this is Jeff James coming to you again with Navigating Teen Life. Now this is the last in our series about how to survive an active shooter event. And I told you the three words I want you to remember are run, hide, fight. So today we're gonna to talk about fight. This is going to be only, and I, I can't stress this enough, only if you have no other way to get away from the gunman or somewhere to hide. This is where they're in the same room with you and you have no other option but to fight for your life. And there's a couple parts to it. One is, remember, this has to be your last resort. Two, once you decide you're going to attack that person, you need to commit to your action. You are at this point fighting for your life. And three, if there's any way you can prepare, if you can get other people to join in this attack on the gunman with you, or you can have things that you could throw at them to try to disorient them, or something you can hit them with to use as a weapon, those are all gonna be helpful to you. Hi, this is Jeff James back again with Navigating Teen Life. Now we've been talking about how to survive an active shooter event. And one of the things that's gonna be important, not in just an active shooter event, but in any emergency, is to get past what's called normalcy bias. And normalcy bias is a way that your brain fools you into thinking that something that could be catastrophic won't be. And we see this a lot in the news when there's, during hurricane season, and we get the governor and, and, the, and the weather people telling people to evacuate. And there's always a certain number of people that say, oh, it'll just be another, you know, mean nothing hurricane. And then people end up losing their lives. And we've also seen this happen in fires where people see smoke coming from under a door and fail to react because maybe that's the door to a kitchen and they think, oh, it's just a smoke from something being cooked. And they don't evacuate. And again, it, it ends up being a tragedy. You're gonna have a point in time whenever you're met with a, a tense situation where it takes you a few seconds to react. But what you need to think about is not putting your head in the sand and not reacting the way other people around you are reacting. If you sense danger, even if no one else around you is reacting, you need to get past that and react. If it's evacuate a building because a fire alarm goes off, even if people say, oh, it's just another stupid alarm test. If you don't know that, you get out of the building. If you think you hear gunshots and people around you are like, oh, that's not gunshots, I know gunfire. No, get away from it. You can apologize later for looking foolish. You can even make a joke about your embarrassment if you want, but it might just save your life. And I could give you dozens and dozens of examples about people who let this phenomenon fool them into becoming part of a tragedy instead of finding a way to save themselves.